In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use automation to streamline the organization and uploading of videos and thumbnails to YouTube. Plus, I'll show you how to automatically pull down the analytics for your videos into a tool like Airtable so you can track your performance. By the way, I'm gonna give away everything that you see in this video. Check it out in a free course that you can find in the description below. I'll give away the Airtable database and the zaps and everything that you need in order to implement this on your own. So let's go ahead and jump in. In this video, I am going to be using a tool called Airshare. You can get to it by going to airshare.com. It's essentially like a buffer or a Hootsuite, but for developers. So let's start by getting an overview of the Airtable database. Remember, Airtable is really just like a spreadsheet on steroids. So if I look at this view down here, you're going to see all the different videos I have in my system and all the different columns that I'm sorting in order to facilitate this process. On the left here, I have several different views, which helps me segregate the data based off of the different status that it's in. I have a video inbox, which brings in all the videos to be scheduled. I have all the videos that are in progress, which one needs title which ones need media, thumbnails, and a description. These views here help me trigger any automations. And then I have a content database view here that shows me all the content that I have in the system plus anything that's been published. So you can see I have a few things in my inbox now, but I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch. So in Google Drive, I've built out two different folders, one for inbox, this is where I put all of my incoming videos. And then second, I have a videos directory which stores all the different videos that I've already uploaded. You'll notice each video has a unique ID and that video ID can be seen in Airtable as well. And this video ID is a formula field. If you come in here, you'll see that it is a formula. I'm really just appending a V on the ID. And if we look in the hidden fields here, you'll see that there's an ID here as well. If I enable that, we can come over here and we can see that that's just an auto incrementing field. Every time I add a new row, we get a new number. I'll go through how the zaps actually create these different folders, but let's go ahead and start in the inbox. If I jump in here and I upload a video, it'll get pulled into the Airtable system. So what I'm going to do is just drag in a video in to the inbox. Once it's uploaded, we have several different zaps which are gonna help facilitate this entire process. In this case, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into this zap here. What this zap is doing is triggering on a new file that is uploaded into the Google Drive. If we open this up, it's pretty simple. We're just triggering off a new file in a folder and we also select which folder we want to trigger off of. In this case, it's the inbox, which you can see right here. The next step in this process is a filter. I just wanna make sure that that file is a video before I continue and then from there, once I know it's a video, I go ahead and create the row in Airtable. If we expand this, we see the event is to create a record and it's pointing to this demo project here, the YouTube uploader and analytics. And I'm inserting that row into the content tab. You'll see here we have a content tab. And then for the name of the file, what we see right here, I'm just using the title of the video, which is coming through in step number one here. So I'm assuming you know a bit about Zapier. Anytime you perform an action in a previous step, you'll have access to all of those variables and other steps so that you can facilitate complex workflows. And then you can see here, I'm taking the ID of this Google file that I uploaded in step one and associating that with the cloud ID in the Airtable database. And by the way, you'll notice that that zap has already run. We have that video that was put into the inbox now into our system. So now we're ready to process this video and give it a publish date. We also have easy access to the image and the media and the folder itself right from Airtable. If I open up this record here, you're going to notice all of the fields that I have visible on that view. Plus it's going to hide 40 additional fields that I'm using to facilitate this workflow. If I expand these 40 fields, we can see some of the other fields that we're gonna use to facilitate this process, like the copy status, the thumbnail status, the media status, the thumbnail URL. And with these, I'm using a formula field to automatically construct the folder URL from the media ID. Again, I use the media ID from the file that we uploaded and added that into the Airtable database. And instead of saving the actual URLs to each of these files, I just created a formula that auto constructs those URLs URLs for us. And then I'm also keeping track of whether it's ready or not. And then you can see here as well, I'm getting ready to store analytics that we'll get in a further step. So if we jump back to the zap, let's go ahead and look at the next step, which is step number four, creating the folder in Google Drive. So remember we're uploading things into the inbox, but we wanna get everything over to its own folder over here. So in step number four, we're gonna create that folder. So I'm using the ID from the row we created in step number three in Airtable. Notice we now have V180. And so I'm gonna name that folder with with the ID from that row. This is showing V179 because this was a test from a previous example. But notice in the videos folder, we have video 180. And then in the next step, I'm merely moving the video from the inbox to that new folder. So I'm grabbing that file using the ID from step one and then using the folder ID from step four where we just created that folder. And then in step six, I'm sharing that file as a public link so that when we finally upload it to YouTube, they'll have access to it. And then I finally update the Airtable record with this new information that we created since 
we created it, which is really just that cloud folder ID. So now from this interface, we can click on the media and we can actually play it here if we'd like. It's a previous YouTube video of mine. And then we can also click directly into the folder. You'll see we have V180 and then also that video we uploaded in step one. All right, so now we have the video, but what about that thumbnail? So next I'm gonna jump into this zap here, which is going to process a thumbnail that we upload into Google Drive, which transfers it to Airtable. So I'm gonna head back to that inbox. This time when I upload an image, I'm going to upload it with the V180 ID. So we'll see that here. That way it knows which video to associate it with in Airtable. And so if we jump into this zap, let's go through how this one works as well. Again, we're triggering off a new file, new files in the inbox. In this case, the filter is making sure that it's an image. We're also using this text formatter to pull out the number from the file name. We wanna make sure we can get access to that 174 so we can look it up in Airtable. Now I'm gonna look that record up in Airtable itself. You see we're doing a find record inside the YouTube uploader and analytics project. In the content table, we're gonna search by video ID. So we're using the value that we got in step three and we're appending a V in front of it. You can leave these both as default values. Then once we've found that record, we can go ahead and move it into the proper Google Drive folder. That's the one that we created V180. You can see that that image is already here. So we move that file. We're moving it from the inbox using the ID from step one and using the folder ID that we got from step number four from the Airtable database. Remember, we looked up the original video that we uploaded, which has that folder information, which we stored in that cloud folder ID. Next, we have to make sure that image is shareable so that Google can read it once we upload it. We're going to make that publicly accessible to anyone that has the link. And then we're gonna go ahead and update that record in Airtable so that we now have the image here as well. And if I click on this button here, it's gonna take me directly to the image. And again, what we did here was we stored the cloud thumbnail ID in the Airtable row. And with that, we're able to construct the actual Google Drive URL so that when I click this button, it opens up. All right, so now that we have our media and our image, we can go ahead and facilitate the rest of the workflow through the system. In this case, what I'll usually do is I'll assign a publish date. I'll expand this a bit. First, I'll pick a time, 11.30 a.m., and then it's going to go ahead on the 27th. Let's change that to the 28th. And now we have these in-progress fields, so now we can check the progress of these different things that we need for our YouTube video, like the title, the media, the thumbnail, and the description. So if I jump into titles, we have the name of the file, but if I want to go ahead and give that a name, I can do that. And then I can go ahead and say that the title status is done, or I could set it to ready for review or in progress as needed to facilitate my specific workflow. When I hit done, it's going to fall out from this view, all because in this view, I'm only showing the stuff that is not done. I also want to make sure that the title is not empty. Then I can jump down to the media filter. Here, I'm going to see that same video file because the media status is not set. Again, I can pick in progress review. In this case, I'm going to say done. It'll fall out from this view. Then we can check the thumbnail. Same logic here. I'll go ahead and say done. And then here, I can go ahead and put in the description. And then I can go ahead and say copy status is done. Now at this point, we've uploaded everything, we've scheduled it, and we've approved everything that we need for the YouTube video. So now that that's done, it's gonna fall into one of these automation views. Here, if we jump into publish to AirShare, we're gonna see this row here, and it's only showing up because everything is ready and it has not been uploaded to the API yet. And now we can go ahead and show you how we actually upload it to YouTube using AirShare. So I'm gonna jump into this zap here, Airtable to AirShare video upload. I'm gonna walk through each of these different steps here. Step number one, we're looking for for a new record in Airtable. If we look more closely, we're looking for a new record, but this also triggers when something enters a specific view, in this case, published to Airshare. Again, we're using the same project, the YouTube uploader and analytics and the content table. And step number two here, it's not terribly important. I'm just doing a little bit of manipulation of the video description to make sure new lines come across on YouTube as they should. But really the guts of the upload happens in this web hook here. If I expand this step, you're gonna wanna make sure to use a web hook by Zapier, and you're gonna wanna use the custom request. You're going to want to use the post method. And this is the URL that you're going to post to. And again, at this point, you're going to want to make sure that you get started with Airshare. You're going to need to create an account and you're going to need to request an API key. And that's what you'll use when you're on this step specifically. They have great docs in terms of how to use all of this and how to structure all of the code. And you'll see here that all I'm doing is passing along the data to Airshare. We're telling them what platform we want to upload to. We're telling them not to shorten the links. That's an advanced feature I won't cover here. We're sending the post 
post. This is really the description. We're also sending the media URLs and we're sending them the video to upload. And we're providing some specific options around YouTube, specifically the thumbnail. And we've also included that thumbnail link. You can see now why we wanted to set this public. We're also setting the video to private to start. We're passing along the title and we're also able to tell YouTube when we want it to be published. You'll notice I published it into the future. So it can actually set a published date into the future. And then in this case, I set it to not notify subscribers, but you could certainly change that and make that true. And then finally in the request, we have to send the content type, which is application JSON. This is a JSON file that we're constructing here to send to Airshare. And then you're gonna to wanna to pass your authorization, your API key, which I've blurred out here. So I'm actually gonna step through this with our specific example. I'm gonna test this. I'm gonna look up the record we just used. You'll see here we have record F. You can see that it's the right file. We'll go ahead and continue to the next step, test this as well. This one's not as important, but we do need it for step three. I'll go ahead and continue. And here's where we can actually send the file to Airshare. I'm gonna go ahead and test that action right here. You can see that it's passing the data. And then once it's done, if you've done everything correct, you're gonna see status equals success. And it's actually gonna give us back the URL of that video. And if I jump over to my YouTube channel, I refresh, then you can see that video is processing now. You can see that it has my thumbnail. And then if we go into it, you can actually see that I was actually able to schedule it for tomorrow at 11.30, which is what I set in the published date. Now you can go through here and finalize everything else. You can pick your playlist, all that stuff. And then back in the zap, there's one final step. We have to update the record with the success. So in this case, we'll look at the action. Again, it's the same base. We're using the same record that we triggered off of in step one. And then you can scroll down to see where we added the results from the webhook in step three. Remember, this was step three. And we're storing the ID of the post, the API response and the status, also the publish URL, and if there were any errors. And so I can go ahead and test that final step. And then if we jump back to our YouTube uploader project, we'll notice that that row is gone here now because it has an API post ID and we've successfully uploaded that video to YouTube. So now let's talk about analytics. I have another view here and I've set up this view here so that it pulls in all of the videos that have been uploaded that have not been updated today. What that does is it gives the video a chance to get some analytics before it actually checks them. In this case, I wanna show you guys how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to yesterday. Actually, it looks like that video is already there because it has never been updated. So now I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the zap that gets the analytics from Airshare. We'll now step through these three steps. So again, we're gonna trigger off a new row in an Airtable database. In this case, it's gonna be limited to the analytics row. So anything that pops into this view is gonna trigger this automation. And now we're simply gonna make another request to Airshare. We're gonna use that webhook. This time we're gonna to post to their analytics API. We're gonna send the API post ID that we got from them when we uploaded it. And we're gonna request the platform YouTube. And again, we have to say content type is application JSON and we have to pass our API key. I'll go ahead and test this by going into this trigger and pulling up that new record. We'll see record F here pull that in. Video demo file for YouTube video number two. This is the one we were working with. We'll go ahead and continue. We'll jump into the webhook and we will go ahead and test that action retest. We'll see that was a success and we'll see that it's coming back with the analytics. Of course, we just published this, so there's not much to show. We'll go ahead and continue. And then finally, all we have to do is update the Airtable record with all of these different analytics that we can pull from Airshare. There's quite a few of them. And you can see here that all I do is map all of those responses into the various variables that we have in the Airtable database, like average view percentage, comments, dislikes, estimated minutes watched, likes, shares, subscribers gained, subscribers lost, etc. And we also put in the status of the actual API request here as well, just in case it failed. So there you go. We went through the entire process of uploading a video, scheduling it, going through the process of updating the titles, the statuses, and the description, actually uploading it to YouTube with the thumbnail and the description, and now being able to pull down the analytics. And again, with the analytics, you can adjust this filter here to get the analytics at whatever interval you would like. Now, as a bonus, I showed you, I would also show you how to get the channel analytics. And we can do that here in the profile YouTube analytics. This one's pretty simple. It looks a little bit like video analytics, but it has other things as well, like specifically how many subscribers that you have. And again, these are the analytics for your entire channel, not per video. So here we're going to be looking at this zap here. This one happens to trigger once a week on Friday at midnight check out the schedule trigger in Zapier. Next, we're gonna look at the webhook again. In this case, we're using the post method and then also the URL to look up profile analytics from the social networks. Again, in this case, we're using YouTube. We're passing content type application JSON and again, 
our AirShare API key. And then from here, all I do is create a record in that profile analytics tab. Again, I take all the data that comes back from that webhook and I just insert it into Airtable one by one how many videos I have, total view count, all that stuff. So there you go. And by the way, remember, I'm giving away everything that you saw here, the Zapier templates, the Zaps, everything in my free community. Check it out in a free course that you can find in the description below. And as always, I hope you found that video valuable. Make sure to check out the next video where I show you how to use ChatGPT to automate all of your social media posts and your YouTube descriptions. Check out that video. I go step by step, just like I did in this video. Check it out. Hope to see you there. Have a good one.